Hi, today we're going to continue looking at the menus on the OM1 camera. Last week I covered set 1 and set 2 of the menus. I've already covered set 3, that's the autofocus settings, I did that some time ago. And today we're going to talk about the, the cogwheel and the wrench tool settings. If it's an important setting, I'll say so. If it's one that's just a personal choice, I'll say so. And also, if it's not really relevant to wildlife photography, I've got to skip over it because I've got to try and keep the length of this film down. In the description underneath the video, you'll find a link to the autofocus settings and the set one and set two settings. And here we go. So onto the cogwheel operations. Button settings, you can change most of the buttons to do something else should you want to. I'm not going to really go into this too far. You can set it up for stills photography or for video photography. Let's have a quick look at the stills photography. So let's say for some reason you want to change the ISO button as it currently is and we come down to the ISO button we've got a line pointing at the ISO button on the back of the camera. It's, it's got ISO written on that button as well. At the moment that changes the ISO as you can see from the right hand side. But if we want to, we can change it to do something else. We could change it to become the exposure compensation button, for instance. Or many other options too. Let's say we want to use it to put peaking on. We haven't talked about peaking yet. That's a, a manual focus assisting option. So you could change it to do that. Now that ISO button does peaking. Don't want to do that, so let's go back and put it back to ISO. My advice would be don't change too many things. It just gets complicated and it's difficult to remember what you've done. So I haven't changed very many things. It's not really important, it's a personal choice. This one is important to me, however, the shutter function button. It defaults to off, I change that to record. That means when I'm in video mode, I can use the shutter release button to start the video running rather than the red video button and I prefer that but that only works when you're in video mode. Dial settings you can change the dial function for stills photography or video again so we just stick to stills pictures you can change it for various program modes so let's say we're going to use aperture priority now at the moment I've got the front dial set up for exposure compensation and the rear dial for the f-stop. You can change both of them. So there's various options. Just run through them. And we're back to exposure compensation and we can change that one as well. And also if you look down here the FN lever which is the lever that's just to the right of the viewfinder is in position 1. But if we go across to the right now the FN lever is in position 2 and you can have those dials do something different depending upon the position of that FN lever very complicated lots and lots of options I don't make use of the FN2 position so the only ones that concern me are these two and that's how I have them set up loop in menu tab that's set to yes at the moment. It's really just how the menus respond. Let's demonstrate this. Let's go back up. We're on the cogwheel at the moment. And if I go across using the back dial, if I go to page 2, then page 3, then page 4, still within the cogwheel, page 5, now when I go to the right, it will loop around and go back to page 1. So I'm still in the cogwheel, just looping around. Let's go back to that menu. If I now switch that to no, so back in the cogwheel, use the back dial, I'm going across. When I get to the last page, it will now go to the wrench tool, the next set of menus, rather than loop round within the cogwheel settings. So now we're on to the wrench tool. That's the only thing that setting is doing. Dial direction. This one is far from clear, but you're changing the direction you have to turn the dials in. So the top one, exposure, is whichever dial you're using to change the exposure. If you're in aperture priority, you're changing the aperture. If you're in shutter speed priority, one of those dials is changing the shutter speed. Well, whichever it is, if you look here, 
when, when it's dial 1, we're changing the dial in an anti-clockwise movement, and when we're in dial 2, we're turning it in a clockwise direction. And that's it, that's what that means, and it's the same for the program shift, you can change the direction to turn in the dial when you're in the program mode. Not very clear that one, but it, that's the way it works, it doesn't do any more than that. Multi-selector settings, there's a joystick on the back of the camera, almost like a joystick, it's more of a button, and, well it does act as a button, by default, that button is switched off, I believe, but you can allocate that button to do something. I keep it switched off because I find I accidentally touch that button too often. It also acts as a joystick, so a direction key, so you can move the focusing points around. If you've only got one or a limited number of focusing points active, you can move where they are on the screen using that joystick, or you can switch the joystick off. I keep it on. FN lever settings. This is quite an important one. The FN lever is just to the right of the viewfinder. We've already talked about it. You can change the settings for still photography or video. Let's deal with the last one first because that's quite simple. You can also use that FN lever as a power switch. Instead of the on off switch that's on the camera, you could use that instead. Don't see the point in that. Never made use of it. So back up to the stills photography option. You can either have it off, mode 1, mode 2 or mode 3. I always have it on mode 2. That means I can use the FN lever to change from one focus mode to another. So while you've got the lever in position 1, you set up which autofocus you want. In my case it's continuous focus. And then you change the lever to position 2 and you change the autofocus to something else. In my case I change it to manual focus and then it remembers those two settings. So that becomes the quickest way of changing my camera from continuous focus to manual focus. I just have to turn that FN lever from position 1 to position 2. So that's my choice. In mode 3 then position 1 follows the the dial position so if you're in aperture priority or shutter speed priority it just follows that but when you put it to position 2 it goes to video mode so that becomes a very quick way of changing to video mode I would actually quite like to do that but you can't do both so I've chose mode 2 mode 1 that changes the dial functions we've just been talking about the dial functions how you can change the front and the rear dial to do something else by moving the FN lever well this is where you switch that feature on Electronic zoom settings, I don't have an electronic zoom, not many of us do. The lock switch. On the top left hand side of the camera there's a, a circular button that's divided into two buttons. If you have that off then that button works. If you change that to on those two buttons are locked. You can no longer use them. I definitely want to use those two buttons. On to the next page. LV close-up mode is a feature I don't use. This just determines how you end it. You have to set up this close mode using a, a, a button and allocating the button to it. It's not a feature that I feel is very useful for wildlife photography. Lock. This is to do with the depth of field. If you have one of the buttons set up for depth of field preview, when you release the button, if you've got it off, then the depth of field no longer shows. So you have to hold the button down to be looking at your depth of field. If you change that to on, then when you press your depth of field preview button, you can let go of it and it still keeps the depth of field preview live. And to get rid of it, you have to press the button again. So I keep that to off. These next three priority set, menu, cursor settings, press and hold, time. I looked into these, they make such a minute difference and are really just not relevant to wildlife photography. We can ignore those. Page 3, LV mode. This is a very important one. I've got it set to standard. You can also change it to OVF. When you're in standard and you do exposure compensation, you can see the viewfinder go darker or lighter and the rear screen too. When you're in OVF, the screen doesn't change. The exposure compensation still takes place but you can't see it in the viewfinder. So I very much like having this in the standard mode so I can see the effect of my exposure compensation. Nothing else on that page matters. 
page four, EV style. This is quite an important one. Over the next few pages of the menus, I kept hitting this problem. Because I'm using the HDMI socket to record the screens, I can't access some of the screens. So we're going to have a change of style now. I'm going to photograph the rear monitor for the next few pages. Page 4, EVF or Electronic Viewfinder Style. You have three choices. Style 1 and Style 2 are very similar and it's very much a personal choice. You just look at the two of them, see which one you prefer. Style 3 is a bit different. Style 3 says that your electronic viewfinder information will be the same as the information on the rear monitor and that's my preferred choice. Info settings. These are the settings that show on the rear monitor display when you press the info button on the back of the camera. There are four options. You've got image only, information 1, 2 and 3. I only have two of them ticked, image only and information one. If you have all four of them ticked, then as you press the info button on the back of the camera, it cycles between the four choices. Because I've only got two selected, it simply cycles between two or just switches between two. So I have image only or some information laid out on top of the screen or on top of the image. If you go to the right from information one, these are the choices you have. There's only five of them. It's quite limited and it's the same limited choice under information two and three. So I don't really see the point. You could untick a couple of them and then save those as information two. But really, I only need the two settings. Info by half pressing the shutter release button. This is giving you options as to what happens to the information that's on the screen and in the electronic viewfinder when you half depress the button. Do you want that information to disappear or to still show? You have three choices here. We'll start off with the right hand one, ON2. This means there's no change. When you depress the shutter release button, nothing changes. ON1, when you half depress the shutter release button, most of the information disappears, both in the viewfinder and the rear monitor. You're just left with the exposure information, shutter speed and f-stop, etc. If you switch it off, then everything disappears off the rear monitor when you have to press the button. In the viewfinder, you still get the exposure information. This info setting is for the electronic viewfinder, and it's exactly as the same as the info settings for the monitor above but just affects the viewfinder. Since I have style 3 set, this is irrelevant because the electronic viewfinder copies the monitor. If you have style 1 or style 2 set up, then this is where you could set the information that shows in the electronic viewfinder. Level gauge, you can either have this on or off. I like to keep it on because I'm very prone to getting sloping horizons. Page 5, grid settings. You can set up a grid in the viewfinder and the monitor. The top line is for the monitor, the second line is for the electronic viewfinder. So first of all, you can choose which grid you want to display. It's off at the moment, I don't use it, but there's a range of choices of grids you can have set up. You can then change the color. So there are two presets, preset one and two. You can go into those and change the color. You might want to choose a black grid line, or you might want to choose a red grid line in the other preset and this is the effect you get in the viewfinder or on the rear monitor some people find it useful for composition multi-function settings if you want to you can set up one of the buttons on the camera to perform multiple functions i wouldn't dream of using it but if you haven't got enough buttons doing enough things already then this might be for you histogram settings i've left these at the default you can change them I don't think many of us would. It will affect the histogram graph and it's something you'd only mess about with if you fully understand what you're doing. So we've come back to the HDMI recorder, the wrench tool. That's where we've got to card formatting. Fairly simple one, slots one and slot two. Card settings. This is quite involved. There's all sorts of different settings here. The first one records to a single card only. The second option it writes to one card, then switches to the second card when the first card is full. This one saves to both cards, but you could have raw to one card, JPEG to another. When one card becomes full, the other can't be saved to either, so the camera stops. 
This is very similar, raw to one car, JPEG to another, but if one car becomes full, the other one can still continue. This one saves the identical image to both cars, so it duplicates it, but when one car becomes full, it stops. And this one also saves this, the same image to both cards, but when one car becomes full, the other one can still be saved to. Quite a few options to think about there. I am normally using just this one. I fill up one card, then it goes on to the second card. Save slot, when you are just using one card at a time, you're saying which card do you want it to start with, one or two? Normally that would be one. And this is playback. Do you want it to play back slot one or slot two? Assign save folder. I don't use this. Do not assign, I, I keep selected, but you can assign a new folder. So you can start off with a new folder if you were doing a new project, I guess. File name, this is quite an important one. I keep it on auto. That means when you put a new card in, it carries on from the highest number that it last used. And if you put it to reset, then it just goes back to zero and starts renumbering from zero again. So I'd rather it incremented the numbers. If you put in a card that's already got some pictures on it, then it will pick up from the highest number on that card that already exists. Edit file name, that could be quite useful if you have two OM1 cameras. For some reason you have to select sRGB here, never understood why. Um, but you can make your file name based on the date or a direct directory number. I choose to do it manually and in effect I'm just telling it that this is camera number whatever I want to call it. So I can tell which camera I've used. Lens information setting, that's for third party lenses. DPI, again I can change this later but normally I keep that on 300. Copyright information, you can put your name in there. I do actually do that. I, I usually put it under copyright name. There's a keyboard. I won't go through it here but I would just type my name in using that keyboard. It means all of your files have got your name embedded in the information. Touchscreen settings, I would normally keep that on. I think it's greyed out at the moment because I've got this HDMI connection. You can adjust the colours and the contrast of your monitor and the electronic viewfinder. Eye sensor settings, I have this kept on. That means as I move my head towards the electronic viewfinder, the viewfinder becomes active. As I move my head away from it, the rear screen becomes active. Behaviour when switched. I have this on maintain screen. You can also have it on shooting screen. When you're in maintain screen and you're looking at your pictures in playback mode on the rear monitor, if you move your head to the viewfinder, you'll still see the same picture being played back in the viewfinder. And sometimes in bright sunshine, it's much easier to, to look at it through the viewfinder. If you're in shooting screen mode, when you move your head towards the viewfinder, it switches off the playback and you go back to shooting mode, ready to take the next picture. When monitor is opened, this is when you've got the monitor to the side of the camera rather than folded against the camera, you can have it so that the, the auto switch doesn't work anymore. So when you move your head towards the viewfinder, it doesn't change to electronic viewfinder, depending on whether you have that inoperative or operative. Sound, well I always have sound off. HDMI settings, USB settings not really relevant to wildlife photography. That's all to do with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, not really relevant. Battery status. Sleep mode, this is quite an important one but it's greyed out because I've got the HDMI plugged into the camera so I can't really demonstrate it but I have sleep mode on 30 seconds normally. I do have to change that from time to time power off I have on something like four hours before it actually powers off completely but when it's in sleep mode you're not using any battery but it will of course come back to life as soon as you touch a button but once it's powered off after four hours even touching touching a button doesn't bring the camera back to life I don't bother with the quick sleep mode and that's really it there's not a lot else there pixel mapping is when you get a faulty pixel I've never had to use that, but in theory it could solve the problem for you. And that's it. You'll find a link in the description to the previous two films covering the earlier settings, and thanks for watching.